And we are live on this uh, happy Mother's Day Sunday afternoon on May 12th. Somewhat impromptu. I d didn't go live on Friday. I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but before we get into this, here's a little opening rock and roll. So I started doing regular live Fridays uh, probably the beginning of December, and I hadn't missed one up until this last Friday. Long story short, in case you haven't heard, you're not following on Facebook or you didn't read the community section, uh, I've been having, I was having chest pains. Um, I had had a heart attack back in 2015, had three stents put in. Uh, had slight, like a wheezing, gurgling noise in my lungs. I'm like sort of recovering asthmatic, but I hadn't had any uh, asthma, asthma symptoms in about a year and a half. Um, so, okay, so middle of the week, I went into work, I was there for about an hour, and they go, no, okay, I'm gonna go to the hospital. Long story short, EKG, uh, still got the little scar here, uh, blood test, everything else, blood pressure was a little high, and they took x-rays, and it comes back, they said that I had pneumonia. I was not expecting that. EKG was fine, blood work was fine, n nothing wrong there, so I wasn't having a heart attack, very thankful for that. But quite surprised uh, to have pneumonia. So basically, they gave me some blood pressure medicine and, um, oh, uh, antibiotics for the pneumonia. So I didn't go live on Friday. Thought I'd use some recovery time. Also, uh, I, put, I worked a 12-hour day on Thursday. I worked a 12-hour day on Friday. Saturday, yesterday, I had an exam. I thought also rest up, focus on the exam. So for a number of different reasons. Working overtime, still in recovery from the pneumonia, whatever. Still have it a little bit, still taking antibiotics, but moving along just fine. Plus, wanted to focus on the exam. So, 24 hours after I took the exam, I got the results. So, I'll get into that in just a minute. In the meantime, Jack White, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in. And Joe F. I'm not, wow, 20 people in. I'm kind of surprised. Being Mother's Day, I figure people, and it's a nice Sunday afternoon. Just was just watching uh, Scotch Four Dummies. They, for a long time, Thursday nights, doing Thursday nights, and they switched to Sunday afternoon, which, in my personal opinion, I thought was a bit risky because once people get set to a particular, a particular time, you know, to watch your show, um, you get that regular, then they're used to it. That's part of their schedule. It's part of the work. Jeffrey Wack, thanks for tuning in. A whiskey with two jerks, thanks for uh, t uh, tuning in. Uh, it's a little, it can be a little risky because... Um, People get set time. So if, if you switch your time, ten, hey, uh, Whiskey Central, thanks for tuning in. Um, people, you, they become, you become part of the routine. And when you break that routine, you go to another time schedule, it can be a little risky, right? Uh, particularly as we go into summer, people get warmer weather, people are going to be out playing. So I'm sticking to Friday nights. I'm not changing that. It'll always be Friday at 5 o'clock Pacific time, unless I have a special guest. I need to work with their schedule. But... Since I missed on Friday and I have some good news, uh, I want to share with that. But I thought, you know what, while I'm at it, I'm going to talk a little bit introduction to what's going on in the whiskey education world, all right? So I'm going to do, I'm not going to go totally in depth or critique all the various education systems out there, uh, but uh, Beth Higgins, thanks for tuning in. Whiskey, I already said whiskey with the two jerks, thanks for tuning in. David Owen, thanks for tuning in. So I am doing, I'm feeling fine. There's still just this little bit when, when you could have a pain in your chest that's due to acid reflux. You could have, be having a heart attack. You could be just having stress. It could be your blood pressure. It could be pneumonia. It could be allergies. It could, there's a gazillion things that can cause chest pain. Um, and so it's hard, it's, hard, it's hard to tell what it, what it could be. Uh, it could be muscle strain. It could be whatever, right? Um, so I'm thankful I wasn't having any more heart attack or anything. They wanted to have another heart attack. First time I had a heart attack, I actually thought it was just due to not taking asthma medicine for the day. So when I went to the hospital, I thought they were just going to treat me for asthma. It turns out I had a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, it's not always like you see in, you know, uh, San Francisco. Uh, uh, it's, it's not always like that. All right. It could be just a sm small tightness in the chest that you're having given your heart attack. All right, move on. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the various programs out there and whiskey education, formal, by that I mean formal whiskey certification in which you're getting, a whiskey education in which you're getting a certification or diploma or something like that is different than your, your own personal education, educating yourself, right? So 
there are some people that are going to stick their nose up at, at all of this and just, hey, just spend the money on whiskey and just learn off the YouTube. And really, if you don't need a certification and you just want to learn for your own enjoyment, absolutely spend the money on books, spend the money on whiskey and watch channels such as my own or Ralphie or Scotch for a Dummy and learn along <coughs> uh, that way, right? That'd be the most efficient. But if you want to work in the industry, if you're going to want to be, say, uh, be a tour guide at a distillery, if you want to, uh, if you need a resume in order and you want to say, hey, look, what you know in your head is a little hard to prove to a potential employer, right? Well, I know this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. But the whole point of having degrees and so forth is did you put on a resume and it shows at least you have some credentials, some proven uh, education in the particular field. And this goes for anything other than say studying medicine, right? You don't want a medical doctor, doctor who just learned, I just studied medicine at home, right? You don't want that. You don't want an airline pilot. Oh, I just learned how to fly at home, <laughs> right? You want someone who's got some formal education and has been proven uh, that they can be a medical doctor, right? You don't want, you know, oh, I did all my medical training uh, online, <laughs> No, I don't think that's what you want. I, I, don't, I don't think that's what you want, right? So, <laughs> uh, so, but the reality is anyone can get a free education on most things. Just buy the books. You don't even have to buy books necessarily. You can go to public library. Obviously, tons of information on online. So, people who want a formal education uh, or need a formal education, perhaps you're working in the industry, and people who want perhaps prove yourself. It's hard to know what you really know until you've been tested. There is a certain satisfaction of studying, studying really, really, really hard, uh, you know, really, really going for it, and then passing. And so the more difficult an exam is, the greater thrill there is in passing. So I've got tons of education. I have two undergraduate degrees, got a master's degree, got a doctorate degree. I have wine certifications, whiskey certifications, certified sommelier with the Quartermaster Sommelier, French wine scholar, the wine scholar, guild double, di uh, diploma with the wine sport education request, the diploma from the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. You know, I went through the first level one course with the, the uh, um, whiskey marketing school, yada, 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 right? Right? So <laughs> it's part of my habit and my background. I enjoy it, but I enjoy it kind of like I, I had a coworker one time and I'd get really, really stressed before taking exams. And it affected me at work, you know, because I'm all stressed out. She's like, Eric, why do you put yourself through that? I said, it's like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. <laughs> it, I hit myself in the head with a hammer because it feels so good when I stop. <laughs> so getting stressed out about taking exams, you know, is kind of is kind of like that as well. So uh, sort of a glutton for punishment. Alrighty. So definitely nobody needs these unless perhaps you're going to want to work in the industry and and we're, we're going to see there can be really really expensive uh jeffrey wax says i'd go to eric wait whiskey university so that's sort of part of what this channel is about is actually to be a midway point between formal education and something that's a little bit more casual you know try to bridge a gap to where i can bring a little bit more information as i share my studies with y'all i'm not the teacher i'm just sharing my studies as i study uh with y'all so if you're not a member of the Facebook group, I've been posting stuff on there. I posted a practice a practice exam. What I'm talking about today really is going to be uh, the Council of Whiskey Masters, their level one, understanding Scotch, uh, excuse me, certified Scotch professional level one. That's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Uh, they primarily, they have a textbook, which you download. They, they don't send you an actual book. They download a PDF. I like to read hard copies. So I print it out. And what I my habit is, I read this four times, about four times. First time, just to get an overall idea as to the structure of the book and so forth. Second time, go through with an ink pen, an underline. Uh, you can probably see, uh, if, you, if you can see that, uh, you know, I start underlining underlining stuff. Or you could use a highlighter, you know, or use a highlighter. Uh, write notes on the side, that kind of thing. Third time, I'm taking those uh, highlighted parts points which is sort of like the main points and i make my own practice practice exam right or you could turn into flashcards when i studied for the court of master Malays for the certified uh Somalia exam i had flashcards and you know so basically you carry around flashcards in your pocket and you have a card that says what is this you know what is uh you know 
what are the first what are the first growths of Bordeaux, right? The 1855 classification of Bordeaux. That's a question. You answer it, and then you flip over to the back of the card and see if you got it right. It's handy. Use those little sort of eight by five card, eight by five, or no, four by five cards. You can put them in your pocket, right? And throughout the day, as you're walking around, just every, when you have a spare moment, pull a card out. And you, when you fully f- finish a stack of cards, you've memorized you've memorized that. You put a rubber bound that, put it away, and then grab another stack. So I would have stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of cards. And I would take a chunk by me about like that much for the day, put a rubber band around it, put that in my pocket. And for that day, that's what I was carrying around at the end of the day, put that away and grab another stack. All right. And, and, and so anytime, maybe you're sitting on the can, maybe you're waiting for something, whatever, yeah, your lunch break, whatever, that's, that's how you self-study. So making practice exams or doing uh, study cards, uh, flashcards is sort of my way. There's also an online source you can get um, called Quizlet. Quizlet, I think it's Q-U-I-Z-L-E-T, uh, and some already else already made flashcards. I, I think, sure, they're there for whiskey. I know they're there for wine. But I find writing my own cards, you know, handwriting it, ingrained it into my head, um, in addition to reading it, right? I have something that's pre-made. Same thing with creating my own exam and typing it up versus using something someone already created. Um, is I find the process of creating the study materials is part of the study, is part of my study. So uh, anyway, so what I'm gonna be drinking today, and I'm gonna be reviewing, this is the Ardbeg Scorch. This is the committee release. We had, a lot of us, not myself alone, but I had mistakenly thought that the Ardbeg, the Ardbeg was the committee release because it was released. Hey, Scotch for Dummies, how you doing, man? And, oh, by the way, I just wanted a sample whiskey uh, for the Scotch for Dummies. So, um, so I'll be looking forward to, I'll probably do a live mini review or something uh, like that. So thank you very much. So this is the Ardbeg Scorch. Uh, I have two bottles. Uh, the full review will be released later this week, either Tuesday or Wednesday. I will explain why I'm doing what I'm doing now in that video. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this. This is bottled at 51.7% alcohol by volume. Basically, it's a heavily charred. Uh, bourbon cask. I'm going to take this. Take take one sip. I could use that one or that one. but And then I'm going to take the Ardbeg 10. Now, why am I doing this? I will explain that in the video later this week. I will explain it later in this week why I'm doing this 50-50 blend. This is part of my, actually part of my analysis of the Ardbeg Scorch. And I'll explain that in that video. Uh, I, the video is going to be fun. It's not just a normal review. Uh, I put some extra stuff in it just to be kind of fun. Play, have some fun with it. Uh, what I like about Ardbeg is I think they're a fun distillery. They don't take themselves too seriously. Even in the marketing for you know, the Ardbeg Scorch, they make a, they make some jokes and stuff like that. Um, and I kind of like that. Alrighty. So, I'm going to let these mingle a little bit. And then we'll all get into this. In the meantime... Let me give sort of an overview. By the way, uh, Scotch for Dummies, um, uh, Andrew's, um, uh, I don't want to call it, other character, I want to call him his, his, his secret identity. He's Dr. Scotch, you know. Uh, and so uh, the Scotch for Dummies has introduced an educational part of uh, their live streams. The Scotch, um, Dr. Scott, Dr. Scotch, I think is a great uh, bit a little more educational, a little more academic as part of their overall sort of portfolio of what they do on their channel. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And they've uh, had some great guests on there as well. One of my favorites, I've watched it twice. I will probably watch it again. They had the, a rep from Glenn Morangy and they went uber geek in depth talking about casks. So if you haven't seen that, hey, Tom, how you doing? Tom, how you doing? Uh, Brandon Knight, thanks for tuning in. So if you haven't seen that one, check it out. That's one in which the first time you watch it, because the gentleman talks super, super fast. Second time, you want to take notes, all right? Well, probably what I've seen thus far, one of the best presentations during a live stream, if not elsewhere, I'm talking about the in-depth uh, nature of cast. All right, so I want to talk about the various systems out there of uh, whiskey education. First one is, uh, this isn't specifically whiskey, this is spirits in general. So the Wine and Spirit Educational Trust, most of the emphasis of Wine and Spirit Educational Trust is on wine, but uh, I'll talk a little about it here. So here's 
this. So this is the Winesburg Educational Trust. The organization is not as well known here in the United States as it is in the UK and Europe. In the UK and Europe, the W set, or some people call it We Set for some strange reason, I just call it the W set, is probably the most reputable wine education organizations, I would say in the world, in the world, but it's more well known in the UK and Europe, but I think it's becoming more known here in the United States. Their W set diploma program is sort of the, uh, uh, one of the precursors to getting into the master wine program with the Institute of Masters of Wine. And one of the components in the diploma, which is a two-year program that I went through, uh, it was actually on spirits. They have changed their level three program. The, the level three used to uh, have a portion on spirits. It no longer does. Instead, what they've done is they've sort of made a separate sp uh, spirit portion. So you can get a certification in spirits from the Wine and Spirit Educational Trust uh, it cost uh, $249 in the United States. It's a four-week online course. Now, this is a new change to WSET. It didn't exist when I was going through the WSET programs. So it's something initiated. So I can't give you an evaluation of this because I didn't go through this particular uh, course because it's, it's, it's new. I went through the spirit education in the advanced or the level three and the level four d diploma. So that's... And that's how I actually got into, let me take this off. Most of you have heard this story before. That's how I got into whiskey. It was while studying for the spirits component of the WZ diploma that I got into whiskey. And then I made a, took a completely different direction and just went uh, head over heels uh, into whiskey. <sighs> Very nice. All right. So they have... Um, it's, the main focus is on wine, but they have a spirits portion. Now, if you're only interested in whiskey, then the spirits program might be too broad of a category, right? Because you don't maybe don't want to learn about vodka and gin and, and all the rest of it. So that's a problem. However, so on one side, they're certificate as an organization and their certifications. They're the most reputable, I would say, in the world. They're highly organized. Uh, it's a multiple language in different languages. A lot of these other programs, you can only do it in English. They can do, you can do it in multiple different languages. I would say in terms of getting a response back from the exams, the result of your exams, they can be a little slow. Price-wise, it's all right. It, it, it's all right. WSIT, the way they're, they're, they're teaching is structured is a little strange. Other than the online courses, the in-person courses, they... You can become a WSET certified instructor. And so you sort of have your own franchise of WSET. So let's say you're in Los Angeles, you're in New York, you're in um, Austin, Texas. So you kind of get your little territory and you, t and you become a certified instructor for WSET. And so you start your own business and you become approved by WSET and then you can get referred through the WSET ch channel uh, but you have to do everything according to the WSET standards, their ways of doing everything. So the WSET is not like one, you can only go through one particular place to do their training. You would basically, you'd want to find WSET training in your area, or now they have online training as well. Uh, of course, but most of the training has, you, you have to be smelling and tasting. You have the smelling and tasting instruction, which you can't do online. So the, the online availability of the classes classes are, are going to be somewhat uh, limited. So people say my name up here. Whiskey Straight Ed, how you, straight out, how you doing, man? He says, good to see you uh, live, mate. Hope you're feeling, yeah, I'm feeling much better. Uh, I still feel a little bit of the, the pneumonia character. Uh, do they cover rum in the program? Yes. Uh, Tom, they don't cover rum in the spirit portion because uh, uh, they cover it. In, yes, they do. I, I correct myself. Yes, they do. I was thinking... They cover another portion. Yeah, they cover rum. Now, how deep they go into rum? It's surface level, surface level, right? Because this is one spirit among uh, among many. So I think for most of us who are mostly, uh, hey, what's Star, how you doing, man? Uh, so I think most of us who, uh, hey, Welsh, uh, kind of curious, what do you think of my my sh doing this sherry sherry cast finished whiskey uh, series? I uh, hope you're you're doing that. Not a lot of viewers are into sherry. I know uh, Welsh does. So, strength and weaknesses, uh, 
strength, the most reputable organization, most widely organization, multiple languages, cost, eh. um, they're a little slow on responses in terms of finding out how you, how you did an exam. And the program itself is a little bit more general than just spirits. But that might you might be more interested in than in just whiskey. All right. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to take a s sniff and a swift and a, and a sip. Hmm. Hmm. So this is my first time blending the Scorch with the Ardbeg 10. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm giving more oomph in ABV and, and pow in terms of smoke and peep to the Ardbeg 10. That's what the Scorch is doing. And I'm counterbalancing some of that extra in the uh, Ardbeg Scorch is basically what I'm, why I'm doing this. Hmm. Hmm. But I'll talk more about that when I do my final review. Um, all right. Hey, Kilko, how you doing, man? Good, good to see you tuning in. So that's the W set. The next, this is the Whiskey Ambassador Program. So the Whiskey Ambassador Program, which I went through uh, here in the United States, it started off just in Scotland, and its primary focus was on training people working in the Scotch tourism industry, people who were working at distillery as tour guides. As tourism, Scotch tourism increased, there was a need for better education for those who were working in the industry. It then grew in popularity and was in Canada and then in Japan and then finally came here to the United States. So they, were, they are the first really accredited whiskey training program. They're accredited by the BIIAB, which is a UK accrediting organization which accredits more than just say whiskey or wine, but basically the hospitality industry. So they're the first accredited and they were sort of the first to get their foot in the door uh, in the whiskey world and for the uh, whiskey we say tourism and a service industry. That being said, that being said, I think there are some the cost wise is okay. It's a one day class. Basically, it's a one day class. Um, the first half of the day, you'd be instructed in the class, do some tasting, and then at, at the end of the, end of the day, uh, you would have your exam and then get a blind tasting on four four whiskeys. Basically, you'd have to sort of base on typicity tell what, what region within Scotland the whiskey came from. Obviously, overall, the course is very, very introductory. Very introductory, right? Um, it's really geared for those at a very introductory level are going to need some professional training to talk to tourists coming through a distillery. That's basically what it's for. Um, they are now, since they were created, other whis there's other whiskey programs that go far deeper, far, far more, and I think do a better job. I, I don't want to downplay or I the whiskey ambassador program needs to step it up a notch and create another level. They I, back when I went through the program, they had talked about doing an advanced certification to the whiskey ambassadors, and they've never done it. And I think they are going to become if they do not improve their training and come up with more training, more in depth training. I think they're going to make themselves obsolete. This is my personal opinion and irrelevant. They're going to be overshadowed by other forms of training. So my highly recommendation to them would be you need to come up with better and uh, um, training, higher level training. You need to do more publicity. You need to do online training, online training, particularly not, since COVID has become really, really important. Um, but if you're in Scotland, and you're gonna work as a tour guide and you don't have any formal education, highly, 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 highly recommend to do it. But there's also the Edinburgh Whiskey Caddy, which I'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, so this is uh, all natural color, no artificial co coloring, uh, no ch chill, fil chill filtering. Uh, this is a blend, in case you're tuning in late, between 50-50 of the Ardbeg Scorch, the new committee release, just came out last week. Uh, I got two bottles of it. My review of it will be coming out later this week, and then 50% of the Ardbeg 10. And I'll explain in that video why I'm uh, doing that. By the way, happy Mother's Day to everyone. Um, um, 
if your mother's still alive and you have the opportunity to spend time with your mom, please do. Uh, my mom passed away in 2013, and she's especially, I miss her every day, but I especially miss, miss her on uh, days like this. Well, Charles says, just to add on that Sherry number, uh, it's high time. On, let, me, let me see if I can highlight this. Let me get to his chat. Get to the ch private chat. Nope, not private chat. Uh, get to the chat. So Welsh Toro says, just to add that Sherry number, it's high time an enthusiast of Sherry and whiskey did some tuber stuff. Sherry is a superb drink and those uh, that like whiskey should get to know about it. Bravo. Well, thank you very much. And I, and I totally, totally agree. But here's the thing. Um, but here's the thing. I don't expect whiskey lovers to become wine lovers. So what I'm kind of trying to do is that even if... So, if at least this, if you're not going to get into drinking sherry and trying cherries uh, by proxy or vicariously, come to understand sherry from my description of sherry and then comparing the, the, the particular sherry with a sherry cast finished whiskeys so that you can see what is picked up from the sherry and the sherry um, cast whiskey. If at least that, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know if I'm accomplishing that mission, but for myself, for my own learning education, and I've already done this before, is to refresh what I've already studied before, because you tend to forget. Short, there's a difference between short-term memory, long-term memory. Short-term memory when you're cramming for exams, and then six months later, do you still remember what you, you know, even though you passed the exam, do you still remember all that? So it's always good to review, review, review. Review, review, review is the key to education and understanding. So to go back over and over and over and over again. So I'm benefiting from that. And the uh, Don Benigno uh, Fino Sherry, I'm really enjoying that bottle. Um, I've been having, uh, um, it's probably not the best for my blood pressure. I had some fried chicken and I put ranch dressing on it. And then I have some uh, garlic olives, which has gives you that briny character. That Fino Sherry with that, for, with <coughs> excuse me, for dinner, absolutely fantastic. Really, really enjoying that. All right, let's get back into it. So, talked about the W set, talked a little bit about the Whiskey Ambassador. Now, let's talk about the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. So, uh, so the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy um, is in uh, Edinburgh, obviously. I think this is one of the best programs out there. I think if there's an organization that's going to overshadow the Whiskey Ambassador training program, this is it. This is it. After I went through the um, diploma program, so they have certifications which you can do online, which don't involve tasting or blind tasting, and then there's diploma, which uh, which you take in 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 person, which requires tasting and a ta tasting uh, portion of the exam. I really, really, really like this. But after I passed the diploma, uh, f the single malt Scotch diploma from the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. Oops, I pushed the wrong button. Da -da -da -da, I'm going to take this off. They then contacted me and said, as a graduate, we would like you to review some of our training material, give us some feedback, and then they're going to... So before they launched their online training, I got to go through it, um, give them some feedback, and then they uh, enacted it on the website. The online training, Scotch training, and now they have Irish training. They also have an Irish uh, certificate as well, which I'll probably go through. Uh, is some of the most engaging and interactive training available. It's not just a matter of watching someone like me go blah, 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 and then you read a book. It's engaging. It's like, so you're going through the training and you click on this and you click on that and you click on this and this. So it's more engaging and because it's more engaging and, and I would say the graphics and everything are done really, really, really well, uh, I think you're going to pick up a lot more from it. And I think it's just done really, really, really well. Super nice people. Uh, one of the gentlemen who uh, is the teacher there, his name is Vic. I would like to get him as a guest during, uh, he worked for Glenn Morangy for 19 years. Um, I would like, hopefully, I'd like to get him as a guest if we can work out our, our time schedules. Obviously, they're eight hours ahead. So when you're looking at any type of training, whether it's the W set, whether it's uh, the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy or any other, one of the things you want to do, if you can, is see who their faculty is, who is actually teaching, who is actually recommending it, who is on their board of advisors, and so forth. 
with WSET, WSET stands on its own in terms of its reputation um, and its global. It's I mean, you can take it in, you can do it, go through it in Japan, throughout Europe, uh, all over the place in the United States. I went through it in San Francisco. It it, it needs in, in the world of wine, it needs no anybody else to bolster it. All right? It doesn't need a bunch of names behind it. It's just so really, really well known. It's constantly re uh, referred to um, in, in the wine industry. Not so much in the whiskey industry, but in the wine industry, they refer to the W set a lot. All right? And the pronomial dip, dip set for diploma is, is highly um, um, regarded in the industry. All right. So um, if you're looking at in the, the other schools, which we're getting into, look and see who recommends it, who is on the board of advisors, who are actually part of the, the, instru the instructors in that. All right. Um, the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, <coughs> like this gentleman, Vic, 19 years experience working for Glenn Morangy. Um, really, really knowledgeable guy. I'm hoping to have him on as a guest because Glenn Morangy, sort of, you say, the, the frontiering um, Scotch distilleries on using sherry casks. So, which is, I think he'd be a really, really good person to come on on the channel, but We'll, we'll see how it works out. Really, really nice. Wow. So, wow, really, really nice. I'm so tempted to launch into a review right now, but I'm gonna save it to, for the video. This is this is a killer combo. Um, all right. I'm absolutely loving this. All right. So the W set, the next, oh, so with the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. Um, so if, if you want to do online training, not, not, and not from home, highly recommend going through the certification program. If you're in, in Scotland, if you're going to be there, the diploma program is a two day class. The uh, mansion that you study at is absolutely beautiful. They provide uh, meals, so you get like a coffee, tea, and I forget what the heck it is. Some sort of breakfast meal, uh, the, and, and you have a lunch, which is really, really nice. They actually pick you. They're going to pick you up in actually in downtown Edinburgh. So you stay at a hotel. You find a hotel in Edinburgh, and then you're going to get picked up from there, and then taken to uh, to where the school is located uh, at the at the mansion. They had. Uh, can, the, I had actually I had the founder of the school uh, uh, interviewed with her. Maybe I'll put a, should put a link down below. Uh, check out the interview with her. She had looked around in Edinburgh for a place. You know, you can rent hotel rooms, whatever. You know, a, a, a meeting room, a banquet hall, something like that. She didn't think it was really good setting. I think an environment in which you learn sets a, a stage for learning and puts you in the mood. I like the setting of a campus. Now, WSET, if you're going through WSET training, you're probably going to be at a banquet room that's rented out for a couple of days at a hotel. You're not going to be in any official schools. So it's kind of, a, there's not that much to the advertisement. However, I would say when you're going through WSET training, because it is so well known, you, you're also going to meet a lot of people. So if you want to uh, engage, exchange business cards, calling cards, and um, network, do some networking. The W set is a great place to network. I've met a lot of people through W set, uh, and some of them I st still keep in contact with. All right. So, uh, the Edinburgh whiskey. All right. So the next one, um, grumpy. Oh, fart <laughs> says I've been to the Scotch whiskey, uh, societies in, Ed in Edinburgh, Scotland, just before COVID. The people were great. Cool. Cool. Um, all right. So let's go into the next one. This is probably the most controversial. Uh, this is the uh, Whiskey Marketing School down there in Austin, Texas. Uh, so, oh, by the way, so the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, let's go back to Edinburgh Whiskey Academy just for a minute. So the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy um, is 99 pounds or $139 for the online certificate. Okay, so I, I meant to be covering the dollar amounts. So now let's go to probably the most controversial. This is the uh, Whiskey Marketing School. Uh, it includes housing, whereas the others do not. It only includes housing. It includes fantastic, superb, superb meals. 
there's this, you're going to do more tasting. Uh, I can't remember how many, I would, so over a two day period, I would guess, I, I, I'm, I'm, don't quote me on this, somewhere around at least a dozen tastings of three whiskeys at a time. So you're doing tons of tasting. With that much tasting going on, you probably don't want to drive in order to stay at a hotel. The online house, the on campus housing is absolutely superb. You're staying basically in luxury suites that are sort of created, I would say, in a combination between a Tuscan and a Spanish motif. Absolutely stunning place. The price, $4,000, is what everybody is going to shriek about and people get upset about. I did a whole video on comparing marketing school training and the price is actually comparable to other marketing programs. The difference is those other marketing programs, you're not tasting whiskey uh, and, you, and they're not having the really nice accommodations. It's also, I think you become part of a club in a sense. Uh, you become an alumni there and a lot, a lot of great networking and meeting people there. It's an absolutely fantastic experience, however, it's a marketing school. It's not a whiskey production school. Um, and so it has a completely different angle to it. It has a heavier emphasis on communication than any other training. It has a heavier emphasis on communication than any other, other organization. So, yes, it's expensive. And I, can, I understand why people would say, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. But... If you could swing, if you want to do something that was fun, educational for a vacation, this would actually be a superb vacation destination uh, that I think you would really, really like it. And if you happen to go there, highly, highly, highly recommend checking out the other distilleries in the area. Stay there for a whole week, not just for the training, uh, and visit the other Texas distilleries. I think Austin really is sort of becoming the hub for the Texas whiskey industry. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be. They're, I'm going to get thumbs down. Let it, people watch this on the replay. They're going to give thumbs down. They're going to make, make all kinds of nasty comments, right? I did a whole video on explaining the training um, and, and so on and so forth. And I totally, totally, totally get that. Basically, I went in as a skeptic. But when I started comparing other marketing training, I found that they're sort of at the same level. But they provide more than any other kind of marketing school. Now, if you don't need training, right? If you don't, don't need training in communication, Right, you mostly want to learn about smelling, tasting, or or in production. Maybe that's not there. However, uh, you're going to taste more whiskeys there uh, that I think are well grouped throughout the whole thing than anywhere else. Um, so, it I would I'm going to say this: every person in every organization has its weaknesses and strengths and pros and cons. Um, so you have to figure out what works best for you. Um, and, and so forth. And as you notice, as you've been going through these, there's these strengths and weaknesses uh, through all these. Take another sip. So Coco says, let me bring him up here. Um, Coco says, uh, Eric. Um, I was lucky enough to visit Wizard Academy at the end of 2019. Uh, go to visit seven distilleries in two days. Absolutely. That's awesome. While well, I was there and had a, a tasting at, in the vault. Cool. So if you go there and you're not visiting the local distilleries, you're, ripping, you're, you're robbing yourself. It's like going to, you know, um, the Napa, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. It's like going to the Napa Valley Wine Academy and not going to any wineries while you're in Napa basically is is what that is like all right the next one is okay so we've talked about w set we talked about the whiskey ambassador program talked about edinburgh whiskey academy talked about the uh whiskey marketing school now more relevant to today's uh live stream this is the council of whiskey oh shoot <laughs> i don't know why i'm have i, I can't say i have problems remembering the name of um the Council of Whiskey Masters. The Council of Whiskey Matters, Masters. And when I first heard about this, I would say almost every organization, be, before I actually started looking into it, I, ven I went in very skeptical. Went in very, very skeptical. But I wonder if I could bring it up. This is my recommendation. When, when I looked at this, okay, how do we know? Because this is the big, big, this isn't just some people 
who, you know, they create a website and they're printing out certificates and they're charging you t- tons of dollars, a, a lot of money, right? That's probably one of the biggest concerns. You want to look at who's backing it. Number one, which I mentioned before, who is on the board, who is teaching, uh, who are the council advisors and so on and so forth. The second thing is, is um, are they industry recognized? Are they industry recognized? Are they industry recognized, right? WSET, as I said before, is the most widely recognized uh, training program, but there's mostly wine and they don't have anything that's specifically a whiskey. This recognition is something which is growing. In fact, if I go back to this, so this school, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a new, if you, in case you haven't heard, uh, this school, the Whiskey Marketing School, and this school, the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, are sort of in the process of, I hope I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not supposed to be saying, um, they're basically having an affiliation, I guess you put it that way. If you have gone through the Whiskey Marketing School and you want to go through the Edinburgh, Edinburgh Whiskey Academy and you're a graduate of the Whiskey Marketing School, you can get a 15% discount. You can get a 15% discount. So there's now this relationship between the Marketing School and the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. What that tells me is, um, yes, Daniel and Rex are... are kind of wacky right <laughs> on their on their videos but they're being recognized for what they're doing and here's the reason why a number of graduates alumni from the marketing whiskey school went to the edinburgh whiskey academy a number of graduates of the edinburgh whiskey academy went over to and took classes at the marketing school and i think what is discovered is from conversations is realizing they're covering different aspects of the whiskey in- industry and the training from these two different schools is actually quite complementary. So if you're doing something we're not doing and you're not doing something we're not doing, why not work together to have some sort of recognition of each other to where you now, these are two different schools you go to to sort of work out your whiskey education. And that's going on. And this is going to continue to grow. But I think not only does it sort of the, the fellow recognition of the, of the other, of, of each other, of the different schools, it becomes in the industry sort of a network, I think, of educational programs that are going to become more and more whiskey industry recognized. And that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. But it's a slow process. It takes time to do this kind of thing. But this is continuing to grow, continuing to grow. There's another school and for life of me, I forget who it is. There's another school in the United States. If someone knows who it is, put, hey, uh, Rich, uh, Richard Agnew, how you doing? Uh, Mike Hassler, how you doing? If you happen to know, there's another school you could put in the, in the chat that there's a, third, there's a third leg in that stool between the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy and the Whiskey Marketing School, and I can't remember who the other was. It might be, uh, might be a school in Kentucky, uh, but I could be wrong. I, if someone else knows who it is, you know, put, it, put it in the chat. All right. Um, next. So, so while I'm here, by the way, so let me, so let's go back to this. So I did the level one course. Um, the level one course. Let's see here. I'm looking at my notes. Where did I put that? Uh, I thought I wrote that down. Stupid me, I didn't write it down. Let me see if I could bring this up, see if the, if the price cost is here. All right, oops, I didn't write down how much it cost. Uh, shoot. Hold on, let me take this off here real quick. Someone wants to look it up. Otherwise, I can look it up. How much does the first level? Man, I thought I wrote it down here, and I didn't. My bad. Give me a second. Da 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 da. I should have a video ready to play in case of moments like this. Da 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 da. How much does it cost? Uh, shoot, sorry. Level one. 
Looking for the price. I wish they put it up on top. They didn't. How much is it? Uh, they don't have... I don't, I don't like it if you hide the price. If someone's watching, if someone from the school is watching it. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Enrollment in the program is $395. I should have had that note. Sorry, it's my bad. So the W set level one in spirits is $249. The Edinburgh Whiskey Academy online certification is $139 US. The CSP is $395. So there's quite a difference. So the, the, the most affordable is the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. The next would be the W set. No, the next would be the W set level one, but it's only spirits at 249. The next more expensive is the CSP program with the Council of Whiskey Masters at $395. If you don't pass, it costs you under four to retake the exam. So um, they say that the exam is challenging. Only 74% of first uh, attempt candidates pass. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this training right now. Uh, let me bring the slide back and I'll talk a little bit more about it. All right. So they send you. Sorry, I'm not that as well organized as I should be. Basically, as I said before, you get a PDF version of this book. Supposedly, the entire exam is based on this book. I, as I said before, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, I read, went through this four times. First time, just to read overall. Second time, to write notes. Third time, to create my own exam. And then the fourth time, just, you know, just kind of cover it all over again. Cover it all over again. On my Facebook group, I posted a practice exam, uh, all of which comes directly from the book. I did it for the history portion. And then I also posted uh, an outline of the Scotch whiskey um, production process. When I was going through the exam, I was sort of like, where was it? When was this covered in the book? When was this covered in the book? I believe every question in an exam, you should say, question number one is covered on page 16 or whatever. Or in terms of like an in-person education, like when I, so when I was on my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, when I was studying for my master's degree, we were told everything in class or in the required books, we had maybe six books that were required reading and then they had another six books that were supplemental recommended reading. We were told everything in the required reading is subject to be on exam. Everything covered in class is subject to be on exam. So if you missed a day of class, there could be something in that class day that could be on the exam. So if you were sick for a day or for whatever reason you couldn't make it to class, you better hope you got a fellow student who's taking really good notes and could pass the notes on to you, right? So the way I do notes, by the way, we're going to have quizzes and exam uh, and during this current series I'm doing on, on um, sharing in uh, Cherry Cash Finish Whiskeys. We'll have some pop quizzes during the live stream on Fridays and then we'll at the end we'll do an exam. Uh, we'll do an exam. So, but if you're following all my videos on Cherry and Cherry Cash Finish Whiskeys, everything that will be in those quizzes and exams will be from my videos. I also will not just cover something once it'll be sort of reinforced in other videos uh my the the live stream i did on an introduction to sherry sherry cash finished whiskeys a lot of that material is being repeated throughout the series in individual videos right so at the end when we have these quizzes and, the, and, and then finally at the exam all that material will have been covered in the previous video so if you're watching all my videos you do well on the exam of course this i'm not giving any certificates or anything like that it's just for fun right it's just for fun uh, and personal edification I was challenged when I was going through through the exam for this. A lot of us like, okay, I know the answer to this, but when was that covered in the book? And I would say there's a huge amount of material that I put into my practice exam that was I would say felt like again, 90% of what I put on the exam never was never in the actual in the actual real exam. So I kind of felt like the exam I took was not really reflective of the material. Now, I'll let you know, I pat, excuse me, got a little spit in my throat. I passed the exam. Need, need a little sip. Let's take a little sip. Mm. I passed the exam. I took the exam, uh, started at 8 o'clock Saturday morning. So you have one hour to finish the exam. 
I finished it in 44 minutes. So, um, and I did it online. The, the exam is, I would say, in depth and intense. It, it is a deep exam. It's not, if you think you just, oh, I know a lot about whiskey, I'll just wing it. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I would, But I would say a lot of my understanding and ability to answer questions came from studies and reading I've done, you know, over the last five years outside of this. I would really, really like to see a proof that every question in there could be found in this book because I, I just didn't find that to be the case. Um, they don't, one thing I did don't like, they don't tell you what your score is. You either pass or you fail. I don't like that for several reasons. Now they say it's because so everybody is on the same level. Uh, here's the problem. When I was in college and I on my master's degree, you had exam day, you took the exam, and then when you got the exam back, you would get your exam back, right? It may was a blue book, right? Exam, you had to write essays. You would get it back. And so you would know what, not just what your final score was, but what questions you missed. The thing is, oftentimes you will learn more, you will remember longer the questions you missed and got right. Oh, I missed that. Oh, I missed number 10. Oh, oh, what was the, what was the answer? What was the answer? answer? Oh, 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 I see where I goofed. See, that's a learning experience. Um, there is value to going, re going over the exam and so let's say you pass, but let's say you got 90%, whatever. Okay. So what were those, what was that 10%? Which ones are going on? Right now, I do not know if I missed any, maybe I got hundred percent. Maybe I didn't. If I, there, there were some I didn't get right, I would like to know what ones I got wrong and what the correct answers are. Because otherwise, potentially, I'm still going around with wrong ideas in my head that need to be corrected from the exam. Do you get what I'm, get what I'm saying, right? I need to know where I got wrong so that I can fix that in my head. And without being told what answers I got, what questions I got wrong, and without being told what the then correct answer is, there's a missed opportunity for learning there. And so I just have to hope that now I would say there out of the entire exam, there are only three questions that I can remember that I had to pause and rethink. I had to like, you know, stop, think, rethink, 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 and reread it, reread it and reread it. There's probably only three questions that I think were like that. Which means most of them, yep, I know this one. Yep, I know this one. Yep, I know this one. When you really, really know it, you're you're fine. You, you're clicking along. Now, I would say this. If you happen to take the exam, read the questions very carefully. Some of the questions are put in the negative. In other words, let's say there's four answers. And three out of the four are correct. If, um, I, I, I can, you know, which of the following, which of the following is not Da, 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 da. Which of the following is not a contributor to the flavor profile of a whiskey? I'm, I'm just making up a question. Which of the following is not an attribute of distillation? Whatever. If you miss the not, right? If you miss that one word not, and then you read the first answer, oh yeah, that's part of distillation, and you click that one, because you misread the question that you're not supposed to give them what is the right answer, but look for which one's not correct, then you miss the fact that, yeah, there are a couple of other questions that are also correct, but what you're supposed to click is what's not correct. So if you're gonna go ahead and take the exam, read, it, read your questions very, 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 very carefully. Read them very, very carefully. It might even help you to read it out loud. You do, there are probably four questions that were written in that negative sense in which three of the answers are correct and one of them's incorrect and you're supposed to find the incorrect. Those can be a little tricky if you're nervous or if English isn't your first language, all right? Uh, I would say when I went through the Winesburg Educational Trust and when I was studying for the Court of Master Malays, the people who I saw struggle the most were people who English was not their first language. They had the biggest problems. There was, I remember one particular gal, I think she was from Vietnam, if I recall. 
Uh, she had a real hard time passing the certified small exam. It took her like several times to finally pass. Uh, and it was, it, it was partly was due to uh, her. she was studying here in the United States and she didn't know the English language. All right. So that's my basic take on that. I passed exams. So I'm happy about that. I'm going to go ahead and do the level two um, for this one. I don't know if I'll go any further than that. Levels three and four uh, for this involve blind tasting. The exams are held obviously in person and in two venues, either in Kentucky or Scotland. So um, if I tend to go on to level three and four, again, I'll make that decision when I get there. Um, then I'm either making a trip to Kentucky or I'll, I'll try to swing a, another, you know, fourth, fifth trip to, to Scotland. All right. So the pros, the pros of this is look at the people on the board. Look at who the advisors are. Some of the people who are, are advisors on this are people I know. Um, Patrick, my brain just wants, he's a medical doctor. He's a master of wine. Um, and we met up at the Institute of Masters of Wine Bordeaux tasting and actually gave him a ride. Uh, Farrell, Patrick Farrell. I felt bad. And so Patrick Farrell is on the board. He's a master of wine. Um, and we met up at the uh, Institute of Masters of Wine Bordeaux tasting. We've met up several times. He's a med actually a medical doctor down in Southern California. Who's also, he's also a super genius guy. And I gave him a ride to the airport. He needed a ride to the airport after a, uh, a Bordeaux tasting. Should have taken a cab since I'd been, also been tasting wine all day, but whatever. Anyways, and there's... and. A lot of other people with names you will recognize in the whiskey industry are also on there. How much input do they have? How much real interaction they have? I don't know. I don't know. But the fact that that many names of highly reputable people are on the council, or on the board, on the advisory committee, whatever, for this is a strength. Is a strength. The fact that you can do the first two levels uh, online is a strength. Um, so that's the pros and cons. In terms of the cost... Uh, three, it was a three, I think it was three ninety. I was three ninety five. is the cost prohibitive. That's something you have to figure out. Uh, I spent $150 on this. These are, I, there's, and I, I'll cover this in the video. There are people who sell the Ardbeg Scorch for 500 bucks. I think that's highway robbery, but anyway, so you, you got, you have to figure that part out. All right. Next school, next school. So I'm very happy I passed when I felt, when I finished the exam, so I, so you hit, you go through the exam and hit the submit button. If you don't hit the submit button and you time out, you, you're screwed. You, you, there's a submit button if, and you should get a notification that you completed uh, and, and it was successfully submitted. So you need a really good internet access. If your internet access craps out on you, you're screwed, right? So you want to make sure and you get a confirmation that, that, um, that you finish it, that are successfully submitted. And within 24 hours, uh, you get, which I really like, at 24 hours, you get the news. So I got the news back this morning, and that's when I said, hey, what the heck, let's do a live stream on this sub subject since I didn't go live on Friday. All right, next. Uh, all right, so we've been at this for almost an hour. Next. So this is the Napa Valley Wine Academy, which, unless you're in California, uh, probably doesn't mean a whole lot. But there's another important part here is the Napa Valley Academy. Um... Okay, so look again, look at the board of who's on the Napa Valley uh, Wine School, excuse me, Napa Valley Wine School or Napa Valley Wine Academy, same thing. Uh, Peter Marks, Master of Wine, he's an acquaintance of mine, he's on the board. Tim uh, Glazer, who I studied with, uh, Master Sommelier is on it. Um, Kristen Canterbury, Master of Wine, and there's some others. Those are just the people I know are on the board. So they are also doing uh, the certified Scotch professional. So the, here's a key. The fact that they are networking for a spirit portion with the uh, Council of Whiskey Masters, uh, Masters, that's another indication of the recognition in the industry of the organization of the Scotch, of, of the Whiskey Masters um, organization, or the Council of Whiskey Masters. The fact that it's recognized by the Napa Valley Wine Academy uh, and that they're coordinating together just like the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy is coordinating things with the marketing school down there in Texas, the Whiskey Marketing School in Texas, is an indication that there's a broader recognition in the industry and an affiliation uh, between the schools, all right? So, by the way, the Napa Valley uh, Wine Academy or Whiskey uh, Wine School also does WSET training as well. So they, 
They do certified. They do training for the cert, uh, quartermaster maliers. They do training for the W set, and they do training for the council level whiskey masters. All right, let's take that one off. Um, another slide from the same school. So here is. So W set. They also do W set level one in spirits four week online training course. So you can do the level one in spirits online training, and it's two hundred forty nine dollars. So you could do it through them or you could do it through some other Debussy uh, proctor. All right. So this is, I covered about an hour. I would say sort of a quick fly through of all these various schools, looking at the different costs, some of the pros and the cons, the strengths and weaknesses of all these organizations. Uh, but I think it's also, uh, uh, I think they're indicators of a growing trend of whiskey education, uh, the desire for it, and the need for it, and I think COVID has really sparked an emphasis on to be able to do online training. One of the things I think it's going to be challenging for, well, maybe not, is the whiskey marketing school is the nature of the school doesn't really suit for doing online training. And uh, from, from last time I heard from Daniel on this, they are not planning on expanding the courses. The, it, it's a marketing school. Right in Austin, Texas, very very small part of it, very small part of it is the whiskey part. We think of the we think of that place most in terms of the whiskey because, because of the YouTube channels. But it, it was a marketing school long before they had anything to do with whiskey. That sort of grew up out of the marketing school. I actually took a marketing school uh, class there in June 2019, about a month before I took the whiskey class. It was phenomenal, absolutely fantastic. Uh, the next, uh, it was a uh, two or three days. I can't remember. I think it had two or three days. The next day after uh, after class, my brain is like, I learned so much about that. And coming away with that is, and I still think about it. I still think about the what I learned there. It's like a semester of college just crammed into a couple of days. Crammed in a couple of days. Uh, I, it, but it's, again, it's insanely expensive. Um, but I, I, I thought it was worth it. What the whiskey marketing class is, is sort of some principles taken from um, the marketing class I took there and then applied specifically to whiskey. Some of it I think could be, could, could be applied a little bit better, but that's a whole nother discussion. I'm planning on doing the level two class at the whiskey marketing school next year. There with COVID, they have now reopened the reopening, they actually have a class coming up. I think it's completely filled. One of the reasons why they're not planning on adding more classes is they have no problem filling the classes. Um, now, obviously, during COVID, is a little challenging, um, and they had to shut down for a while, but they have no problem filling up the classes. They quickly get filled. So my plan is to actually be back down there next year for uh, the Do the Level 2 course, the Do the Level 2 course. I'm also planning on doing the level two course through the Council of Whiskey Masters. Masters. After I do that, I will probably do a more in-depth video and talking about whiskey education. I'm talking about whiskey uh, education and, and all this. So, alrighty. So before I head off, we're going over just a little bit more an hour. But before I head off, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to leave them. If you're watching this on a replay, leave it down below. Before I head out. Uh, this afternoon, if you have any questions you want to put drop in the chat at the moment, I'll bring the questions up and answer them. Let me go back, um, make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, so very happy I passed. Very happy that I didn't have a heart attack this last week. Very happy, you know. I mean, I don't. I'm not happy about having pneumonia, but I keep taking. Uh, hey, Richard Amira, how you doing, man? So Richard Amira uh, is a also who works. Let me bring him up here real quick. Dun, 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 dun. Richard, where is Richard? There he is. There, hey, you doing, Richard? How you doing, man? So Richard is also a fellow alumnus. We took the class together uh, there at the uh, Whiskey Marketing School. And Richard is the bartender at the Crowded Barrel Tasting Room. So if you're ever visiting the distillery, visiting the school, you definitely going to meet up with uh, Richard there. So, hey, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. All righty. So um, hope you all have a fantastic week. Later this week, uh, my review of the Ardbeg Scorch will be posted probably Tuesday or Wednesday to see how, how, see how it goes. Uh, I got the bottle. The bottle is down right here. I want to get it down a little bit further before I... At the Fang and Feather right now. Oh, so Richard's actually right now at the tasting room. The tasting room is called the Fang and Feather. He's actually there right now. So I want to get down a little bit for the shoulder. 
Try it on water. Try it a number of different ways. Uh, try it on ice. I, I just tried blending it with you know a ten year old uh, art bag. So try it a number of different ways before I give my my final review. Um, next Friday we'll be live again. So I will probably we were gonna I was gonna do a live stream with um, Matt Zittrick from Whiskey Crusaders this last Friday, but because I had to cancel Friday, so probably next Friday I got to check with Matt see if he's available. Next Friday we'll go live. We'll talk about Ardbeg Distilleries uh, committee releases. We'll talk about the committee releases and specifically uh, talk about um, the Ardbeg Scorch. But that'll be, of course, a couple days after my postal review has, uh, my formal review uh, has posted. All right. So again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Currently have uh, 19 in here. Uh, everyone, if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. If you're watching on a replay, give it a thumbs up and uh, share this with your friends and family on uh, other social networking channels. And if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do. And until next time, I gotta bring up my outro. Slanjiva.